let's do a power lab. Hey, did I ever tell you I can pick up a thousand pounds of bricks and put them on that table? Pretty impressive, huh? Yeah, until I tell you, I'm gonna do it one brick at a time. Well, it is the same amount of work. 3,000 pound feet, whether I do one brick at a time or I do the whole pile. But what about the time it takes me to do this job? That's going to have an impact. And that leads us to the idea of power, work per time. Okay, so let's say I can do it in one shot. 3,000 pound feet of work in two seconds, let's say. That's 1,500 pound feet per second. And what if I do it over 200 seconds? Just taking one brick at a time. The power required to do this would only be 15 pound feet per second. Yeah, quite a difference. This is why power matters. A long time ago, people hooked up horses to find out how much power they could put out. They measured one horsepower to be 550 pound feet per second, but that was for a horse working all day long. If you have a flight of stairs at home, you can do this lab yourself. Instead of bricks, it's going to be your own body that you're going to lift up the stairs. As you run up the stairs, you're going to flex your leg, which will lift your body. You will have to exert a force at least equal to your body weight. That force will be exerted vertically through a distance of the height of the stairs. So the work output for you is going to be the body weight times the height. We don't really worry about the X motion because gravity's pulling down. That's what you're fighting. The only forces you're fighting going sideways are going to be internal resistance, air resistance. I mean, it's not going to be as much compared to the height going up. Now all you have to do is measure the time to run up the stairs, and you'll have your power output. I always think it's a good idea to get a running start before you get to the stairs. The stopwatch starts when you get to the stairs, and then you stop the stopwatch at the top, and you try to maintain a constant velocity. If you can maintain a constant kinetic energy, then the output of your work is going into potential energy, not the kinetic energy. You can think of power as the rate at which work is done. To the stairwell. And here's the stairwell, built around 1850, and I'm running up it. Okay, I just measured the height to be 3.2 meters. And you can run up the stairs two at a time if you like. You can hold on to the railing if you like because it's all coming from your body, it doesn't matter. Well, we got a height of about 3.2 meters. I weigh about 200 pounds. We'll convert the meters to feet. You start the timing when I hit the first step. I'm getting a running start. Okay, we gotta get some data up here. I went up 3.2 meters. That's about 10.5 feet. We gotta get my body weight. But you're gonna to have to watch the video to get the time. Once you get the power output in pound feet per second, you can calculate it in horsepower and watts. Now you can compare me to a horse or a light bulb. Just remember these things run all day. I only ran up the stairs for a few seconds. Every year we do this lab in school, we put the data on the board and compare people's power output and their power to weight ratio. From a physics point of view, the power to weight ratio is just the power divided by the weight. You can see the weight cancels, and this is just the vertical velocity. But it needs a little more for a physiology point of view. Let's say we have a big football player Run up the height of the stairs, 20 feet, weighs 250 pounds. He does it in seven seconds. That person's going to do 5,000 pound feet of work with a power output of 714 pound feet per second. Well, now we have this skinny kid, and let's just say this kid runs the 20 feet, weighs 150 pounds, and also does it in the same seven seconds. Well, this kid did 3,000 pound feet of work compared to 5,000 pounds feet of work for the big guy. That sounds more impressive. And this guy's power is 429 pound feet per second, a lot less than the big guy's power. But if we compare the power to weight ratios, well, they're the same, 2.86. And you can think of it as pound feet per second or power 
per pound. This is how much power every pound of your body can produce. If you were a physiologist studying athletes, you wouldn't be measuring it in those units. You'd be using watts per kilogram. And this is commonly studied for top athletes. In many sports, it's not just having a lot of power that matters, it's your power to weight ratio. Can you think of some examples in sports where just pure power matters? Can you think of some where power to weight ratio matters? So between two fit athletes who have similar body fat ratios, if one person is much larger than another, they still may have the same power per weight ratio. So generally speaking, the more muscle you have, the more power you'll put out, but you're gonna have more weight Think about the person playing center in football versus a pole vaulting. Who do you think has to have more power? Who do you think has to have a higher power to weight ratio?